Okay, we can begin. All right, we'll call this meeting back to order of the Board of Directors of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District. Would the clerk please call the roll? Vice Chair Aquino? Here. Director Middleton? Here. Director Desmond? <coughs> Director Frost? Director Guetta? Director Hume? Chair Kennedy? Here. Director Lalowie? Director Lillow, I think you're muted. Director Maple? Here. Director Vandenberg? Director Serna? Here. Director Singh Allen? Here. Director Terry? Here. Director Vang? We lost quorum. Director Vang, are you on the line? I think you're muted if you are. Is this the AQMD hazing process? <laughs> <laughs> Director Vandenberg just uh, sent his thumbs up. So let me go back. Yeah, I just, uh, this is Jamil Moons. I sent him a message. He was asking, he says he's not feeling well on the chat, and I wanted to let him know that after consent calendar that there are no um, vote, and he did respond positively, affirmatively. So so we have quorum now. Here, if that counts as he's present or uh, he's still active on the, on the site. Looks like he's unmuted now. Um, Selena, why don't you try again? Director Vandenberg? maybe having audio problems as well. I think he is. So I have in the chat that he gives a fun thumbs up that he serves. So we have quorum. Okay. I'm here. Great. Thank you. Is that the end of roll call? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, those that can please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, you have announcements? Yes. In compliance with directives of the State and Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the physical location of this meeting is closed to the public, consistent with state and local officials' recommendations to promote social distancing and Assembly Bill 361. Members of the public are encouraged to participate in the meeting by observing the meeting in real time at metro14live.saccounty.gov, Zoom video conference, conference line, and by submitting written comments electronically by email at boardclerk at airquality.org. Comments submitted in person will be delivered to the Board of Directors by staff. Public comments regarding matters under the jurisdiction of the Board of Directors will be acknowledged by the chairperson accepted until the adjournment of the meeting, distributed to the Board of Directors, and included in the record. This meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District is cablecast live without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is being closed captioned and will be webcast at metro14live.saccounty.net Gov, I'm sorry. Today's meeting will be repeated on Saturday, February 25th, 2023 at 1 p.m. on Channel 14. Thank you. And that takes us to our consent calendar. Con the consent calendar, we have items one through four. Okay. Are there any members of the board that would like to comment or have questions or have an item removed from consent? Move consent. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second, Aquino. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any public comment, Madam Clerk? No, Chair, there is not. Please call the roll. Vice Chair Aquino? Aye. Director Middleton? Aye. Director Desmond? Director Frost? Director Guetta? Director Hume? Chair Kennedy? Aye. Director Lalowie? Director Lillowey, can you just look up and give me a thumbs up if you are having audio difficulties? Director Maple? Aye. 
Director Vandenberg? Director Vandenberg sent me a yes through the chat. Director Serna? Aye. Director Singh Allen? Aye. Director Terry? Aye. Director Vang? Director Vang, can you get, send me a message to the chat if you're able to? Consent, our, consent calendar passes. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to item number five, the air pollution control officer presentation. Dr. Ayala. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Good morning, board members. Um, One second. Okay. Next slide, please. Thank you, uh, board chair, and um, uh, I have a just a couple of very brief items to share with, with you all. And um, perhaps uh, the technical difficulties we are facing this morning uh, are an omen because uh, let me remind you that uh, today is the, the last meeting that we'll be able to uh, come together uh, for your board of directors meetings in the current format. Uh, as you know, the executive order uh, is going to end. Uh, next week on the 28th, and it's fitting that one of the things that we are working uh, on per your direction is some recommendations in terms of how to return back to the traditional Brown Act requirements. Uh, and we are going to fold into this recommendation uh, some of the work that we have shared with you in the past related to the air quality benefits of teleworking um, teleconferencing and frankly just not having to drive around to meet in person as, as we used to do before the pandemic. We've all grown used to the technology. Now we know most of the time it works, notwithstanding uh, today. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be doing is providing some recommendations and easy to follow uh, directions uh, to our sister agencies primarily, public entities that are subject to the Brown Act. Um, and to our surprise, there's quite a bit of, of interest in this. There's still quite a bit of uh, confusion, if you will, in terms of what this means. And the letter, the, the correspondence we're working on, is actually going to be pretty far reaching because we want to reach to regional agencies. Obviously, we are going to be reaching to state agencies. Uh, so I think at the running list, we have probably north of uh, 100 recipients that we want to reach out with this recommendation. But in, in, in summary, um, we are going to come up with alternate locations for you all to convene in our board meetings. Those alternate locations need to be accessible to the public and they need to be noticed. So what is going to happen is the board clerk is going to be reaching out to each one of you individually uh, prior to our next meeting. Uh, and then we will be working with you to decide where would you like to take the board meeting from and again, continuing to encourage uh, folks like Director Vandenberg, who's already spoken about his um, inability to come to, to downtown very easily. Um, you will not be able, most likely, to stay in your home office because, again, this needs to be publicly accessible. But the option we're going to recommend to each one of you is that you go to your office at City Hall uh, or some other place where it's okay and safe to, to notice as a public uh, uh, venue. So again, um, given the importance and the relevance of the information, uh, we're going to put this in a, in a document that we can share widely. Uh, so we, we're just giving you a preview, and uh, we'll be sharing that with you all. And interestingly, our, t our timing is perfect. The emergency uh, declaration ends on the 28th, and that is the date that we are shooting to send this, this uh, letter out. So. Um, I'll answer any questions you have after the APCR report, but we just wanted to make you aware that we are, per your direction, working on, on, on that information. Next slide, please. Mr. Chair. I, uh, Dr. Ayala, I had a question about uh, what I think I heard you say about uh, board direction to explore the prospect of holding meetings in different locations in person, I, I suspect, right? So you're talking about having uh, in-person meetings rotate 
or um, no, Director Serna. So um, what we are recommending is to return to traditional Brand Act requirements, and what that means is alternate locations are okay to have. So you don't all have to be physically in the same location. Okay. We can have multiple locations. Suffice that we okay. meet two criteria: that those are publicly accessible and that they are noticed okay. as locations for your board meetings 72 hours in advance. Okay, that, that clarifies that. I, I yeah. wasn't sure if you were uh, speaking to the uh, possibility of having in-person meetings rotate at different locations. And if that was the case, then the other limiting parameter, of course, I believe is, is, uh, are there, is there the infrastructure to broadcast, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're not recommending that. And the only in-person convenings that we are going to recommend to the board is that we consider coming together at least twice a year, as we discussed last time. But uh, like I said, um, the clerk is going to be reaching out to each one of you, uh, because again, we have to note the location and we have to notice it. Um, so we can address your questions um, at that point. Um, and again, we're gonna put this information along with the, the arguments for why this is good for our quality in, in this correspondence that, that we're working on. So. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry, we're already there. The last item that I wanna share with, with you all is, is again, just to give you a heads up because obviously uh, locomotives in, in our region are uh, pretty visible uh, from the standpoint of, obviously we have a lot of locomotive activity, we have the museum, what have you, but um, we've been made aware of an issue uh, and the issue is simply um, idling locomotives that idle for what we think is presumably too long, we're talking in some cases days without uninterrupted idling activity. Clearly, the concern is public health. Diesel emissions are a known carcinogen. Uh, it happens that some of the complaints that we've received in, in the Sacramento area for these idling activities are right next to people, residences, and, and so forth. So this is something that we are gonna be looking into. And again, the point of us uh, bringing this to your attention is that you are aware of it. Uh, we're already talking to UP and we're in communication, uh, exchanging information. Um, we're not the only air district that is dealing with these issues, unfortunately. Uh, but I did want to make you aware because I know we've, we've had some um, inquiries from uh, elected officials in the region that are interested. So we thought we'd make you aware of this as well. So more to come. Um, but um, with this, uh, this concludes the APCO report, Chair. I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Director Maple has her hand raised. Uh, Director Maple. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, I, I do want to say that I have several communities in my district that is that are impacted by this specific problem, and I, we've been reached out to um, by several constituents with these concerns. So I'd love to work closely with you on this if possible. Um, I would also recommend, um, in addition to reaching out to UP, that we reach out to um, the union that represents the locomotive engineers. They're pretty active, um, and they might have some feedback as well. So happy to connect you. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Director Maple. We'd be happy to uh, connect with you as well. And, and again, thank you for, for sharing that. Part of the reason we wanted to bring this to your attention is again, because I know your constituents, for some, some of you are reaching out to you. So, you know, we are, we are working on it, we're on it. Um, we'll keep you updated. Any other questions or comments? Not at this time. Do we have any comments from the public? No, Chair. Thank you. Uh, uh, Director Ariel, I will <clears throat> say thank you to you and your staff for taking leadership on the Brown Act guidance for teleconferencing. Um, you are accurate and there's confusion. Um, I, I, you know, of all the boards we all sit on, I have heard multiple interpretations of it. So uh, I think it's appropriate that and you and I have been talking about this for years, uh, that the AQMD take the lead and hopefully we can get a unified position and policy throughout the region. So thank you for that. Next item, please. The next item on the agenda, the discussion calendar item number six. 2022 heat event and emission impacts in Sacramento, and I have Brian Krebs on the line to give a presentation. Uh, hopefully my, my audio is working. Uh, we can hear you. We can okay, hear you. Thank, thank you, Brian. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, uh, Chair Kennedy, members of the board. Uh, my name is Brian Krebs, and I'm the permitting pro program manager here at the district, and I would like to give you an informational 
presentation regarding the heat event in 2022 and the resulting emissions impacts. I also want to point out that the presentation that, I, that I'm about to give has some slight changes on slide three uh, from that, which is part of the originally sent agenda packet. Um, next slide, please. Uh, to start with a little background, at the end of last summer, uh, specifically August 31st uh, through September 9th, uh, California and the adjacent western states went through an unprecedented heat wave. This resulted in a record use of electricity and, called, and caused a Cal ISO grid emergency. Uh, though I will be talking about the heat event of 2022, uh, we experienced similar events in 2021, uh, with climate change making these events more and more common. Uh, next slide, please. In anticipation of the 22 uh, heat event, the governor declared an emergency, energy emergency and issued an emergency proclamation. In order to keep the lights on, the proclamation allowed the uh, power plants and backup generators to operate outside of their permit requirements. Now, the governor's proclamation only has the authority to grant relief from the state requirements, and that separate uh, federal action would be needed for relief of any additional federal requirements. More on that in a subsequent slide. Next slide, please. As was mentioned, since these heat events are more common, resulting in potential energy shortfalls, several state incentive programs have been developed to try and help alleviate these situations. The incentive programs allow participating companies to either provide energy to the grid or reduce uh, these companies' energy use during these emergencies. Uh, one program is known as the Energy uh, Load Response Program, or ELRP. The ELRP, is the, as the name implies, is an energy uh, reduction program that was created by the California Public Utilities Commission and is administered by the state's three large investor-owned utilities, PG&E, Southern California Edison, and San Diego Gas and Electric. Um, the second program, which pertains to Sacramento, is the Demand Side Grid Support Program, or DSGS. Uh, this program offers incentives to electric customers that provide either load reduction or backup generation. Uh, this program is operated by the California Energy Commission with a $2 million uh, annual fund. We are aware of one Sacramento company that participated last year, and that company is the NTT Global Data Center. Next slide, please. The NTT Global Data Center is a data center comprised of three separate facilities that are in close proximity to one another. Two of the facilities are adjacent to one another, while the third is located approximately a half mile away. The two adjacent facilities are classified as a federal Title V source. In total, these three facilities have 53 large diesel-fired emergency backup generators, 28 of, 28 of which operated during the 22 uh, event. Uh, these 28 backup engine generators are rated at over 83,000 total horsepower and have 57 megawatts of energy generating capacity. As mentioned earlier, the governor's proclamation only granted relief from the state requirements. Therefore, the federal Title V source needed, an additionally, uh, needed to additionally obtain an emergency order from the Department of Energy in order to grant them relief from their federal permit requirements. Slide five, or next slide, please. Of these 57 engines, as previously mentioned, 28 engines were operated for four days of the heat event, September 6th through the 9th, uh, during the peak energy demand time. So they didn't operate the entire day, but during the, the peak uh, time. Uh, these engines operated for a total of 561 hours, or an approximate average of about 20 hours per engine. Uh, the chart to the right illustrates the scale of the emissions. During the four-day period illustrated by the bar to the left, these engines emitted a worst-case estimate of 7.3 tons of NOx. Uh, the middle bar illustrates the amount of emissions, uh, 3.1 tons, per year this company emitted in all of 2021. Uh, lastly, the bar to the right illustrates the average daily emissions of 6.4 tons per summer day for all stationary sources in the whole Sacramento federal non-attainment area. 
Though these three columns represent different periods of time, nonetheless, you can see how significant these excess emissions were for a very short period of time. Next slide, please. This is a map of the county showing the relative location of the NTT facility, which is located northwest of several sensitive communities. The excess emissions from these events are potential contributors to ozone production on the hottest days of the year. Along with the potential of ozone increases, health risks are also increased from the excess diesel emissions, which are considered toxic air contaminants. Next slide, please. The original governor's proclamation back in 2021 directed the California Air Resources Board or CARB to develop a program to mitigate any resulting emissions from these events. As a result, CARB created the Climate Heat Impact Response Program or CHIRP. Uh, there are two components in CHIRP, emissions reporting and the mitigation plan. The mitigation plan has a strong focus on ensuring investments uh, take place in the impacted and disadvantaged communities where the emission sources are located. Though the program spanned both the uh, 2022 and 2021 heat events, uh, to date, CARB has not provided any mitigation funding. Next slide, please. As for next steps, uh, we will continue to work with NTT to further refine their excess emission calculations. As mentioned, uh, they're currently based on uh, worst cases if all engines operated at uh, full capacity. Um, we are also working with CARB CHIRP, uh, the CARB CHIRP team on the mitigation process in hopes of ensuring that the mitigation is tied to the affected communities. In conclusion, as you can see from Sacramento's experience last year, keeping the lights on does come at the expense of air quality. The district is in full support of the public safety aspects of keeping the lights on. However, since these types of events are anticipated to continue on into the foreseeable future, we are advocating and working with the state, air districts, and other energy partners for cleaner and better alternatives than the use of diesel backup generators when confronted with these types of heat emergencies in the future. Next slide. Uh, this concludes the presentation, and I will be happy to entertain any questions. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, do we have any public comment? No, Chair, we do not. Thank you. This was a receive and file, so next item, please. The next item, item number seven, update on Clean Air Act fee requirements, and I have Kevin Williams in chambers, <clears throat> excuse me, to give a presentation. Okay, good member, good uh, morning members of the board. My name is Kevin Williams. Uh, I'll wait for the presentation to pop up. My name is Kevin Williams. I supervise the rulemaking group at the district. I'm here to give a presentation on a rule that we'll be uh, taking next month for a, for a hearing before the board. It's, uh, it involves uh, penalty fees imposed by the Clean Air Act on uh, major sources uh, in the event that we should uh, not achieve uh, air quality standards. Next. Federal EPA uh, frequently reviews and adopts new air quality standards and uh, evaluates whether particular regions are in attainment for those standards based on monitoring data. Uh, re regions that are uh, designated as, as, uh, as uh, non-attainment areas then are classified according to the uh, severity of the, uh, of the problem. And those classifications uh, can range from uh, marginal to extreme. And uh, uh, as you move forward in this, uh, in this range of uh, classification, uh, you end up getting more time to attain. But those, uh, uh, those uh, classifications uh, come with uh, additional restrictions as you move forward. Next slide. So the Federal Clean Air Act, uh, it's Section 185, uh, 
it requires a penalty on major sources if uh, EPA issues a finding of failure to attain an ozone standard by the applicable deadline for that standard. Sacramento County is part of the, uh, the Sacramento metro uh, uh, non-attainment area. And uh, that area is classified as a severe non-attainment area for uh, the 1997, 2008, and the 2015 ozone standards. Uh, currently, the, uh, the district's rule 307 only applies to the, to the 1979 one-hour ozone standard. Next. So the, the Clean Air Act uh, 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 penalty fees are, are triggered by a, by a finding of failure to uh, achieve the standard. And on January 17th, uh, last month, EPA issued a finding of failure to submit uh, a, a penalty fee rule for the 2008 standard. Uh, and that's a, then a deficiency in the, in the plan to meet that standard. And that finding uh, starts a clock, uh, became effective on February 16th, that re would require uh, uh, increased emission offsets for businesses and federal highway fund sanctions uh, if we don't correct that uh, by submitting uh, a, a penalty fee rule uh, with an update that includes the 2008 standard. And uh, we'll also need to, to have uh, implementation of the, fa of, the, uh, of the fees for the 2015 standard also. Uh, even though we haven't been flagged as a deficiency for that, but we'd like to get that in the rule. And so we've proposed in the amendments that we're going to bring to expand the applicability of the rule to uh, include the 1997, the 2008, the 2015, and future ozone standards. And then upon uh, district approval, uh, we plan to submit rule 307 to the board, uh, 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 after, sorry, after board adoption, we plan to submit it to Carbon EPA uh, to stop the sanction clocks. Next. This map uh, shows the locations of uh, major sources to which these uh, penalties would apply. Uh, on the right is a list of the major sources. Uh, we have Chevron. Uh, the, uh, the terminal, Kiefer Landfill, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Rayon, uh, NTT Global uh, is the data center that Brian Krebs was just talking about, uh, Procter & Gamble Manufacturing. Uh, we have another terminal uh, by, uh, run by uh, Santa Fe Pacific Pipeline. Uh, Silgan Can Company is another one. We have four plants, uh, power plants that are operated by SMUD, and lastly, uh, the UC Davis Medical Center. And the map, uh, which is a little bit difficult to see, uh, shows the locations of, of those facilities within the county with a, uh, uh, a number on them that corresponds to the legend on the right. Next. So now I'd like to cover uh, uh, what's been done so far on public outreach and the next steps. So we held a public workshop on February 9th. And prior to that, uh, we had sent out a workshop notice. Uh, it was widely broadcast to everybody on our, uh, on our uh, list who uh, requests uh, public notices. We sent... Uh, personally addressed email address to each of those 12 major sources and then followed up with, uh, with phone calls and we were able to talk to the, to the right people about that. We held, uh, we held Teams meetings in some cases to, uh, to describe the, uh, uh, the purpose of the rule uh, and the impact that it could have on their facilities and uh, the requirements that we were under to, to adopt the rule. 
and gave them the opportunity to ask questions and also to encourage them to participate in that February 9th workshop. Uh, the, as a next step, the, these proposed amendments to Rule 307 are going to be brought before the board uh, at the uh, March 23rd meeting at, uh, for a public hearing. And then, uh, uh, assuming those are, uh, that is adopted, we'll submit them to Carbon a EPA as, uh, as uh, ZIP um, submissions. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, I'll answer any questions anyone has. Any questions from the board? <clears throat> Director Maple. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick question. So you said uh, you know you had done some outreach to the affected um, organizations, and then you had the um, the meeting on the ninth. Did, did everyone participate in that meeting who was affected, or were there organizations or people that didn't participate that probably should have been there? I don't think we had anybody who shouldn't have been there. They're, they're, uh, uh, not all organizations were represented, uh, but uh, all organizations had been briefed uh, prior to, to the meeting, and uh, uh, I think that some of them may uh, have felt that they didn't need to participate in the, in the public workshop. That they had, uh, that their briefings had sufficed. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Not at this time. Thank you. Is there any public comment? No, Chair, there's not. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Do I hear? Oh, next. Uh, Item is closed session and members uh, who are present or member who is present, uh, you know, we will move to the, uh, the hearing room. And for those of you that are on Zoom, uh, you will, uh, the clerk will move you into uh, closed session. So uh, you don't need to do anything. Just give me one second and I'll send you all over. Mm -hmm. Amy, I'm All right, we will call back to order this February 23rd, 2023 meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District. Uh, at this time, uh, ca uh, Council, is there anything to report out of closed session? No, there's nothing to report. It was just a status report to the board. Thank you very much. With that, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are adjourned. Before we adjourn, <laughs> we have to ask if there's any board ideas, comments, or AB 1234 reports. Board comments or AB1234 reports? Nope. We will again adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>